So you want to configure security rules on the Palo Alto file, but you're not sure if you're doing it correctly. So this is the video for you. Stick around, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So today we are talking about security rules. The security rules from the Palo Alto are one of the core features that the firewall has. There you can define which traffic will be allowed through the firewall and which traffic will be blocked. Uh, in our case, we are gonna do a little example with this lab that I built. I want to configure that the Linux 1 uh, server wants to communicate with the Linux 2 through SSH and the firewall is supposed to allow it. Currently the connection is not allowed. You see on the left side you have the Linux 1 and on the right side you have the Linux 2. So the Linux 1 wants to access the Linux 2. Ping 10.0.1.5. This works. But if I come and say SSH 10.0.1.5. It comes to a timeout. It doesn't work. It just stays like this forever. Just press Ctrl C. Let's go back to the firewall now. So let's go to policies. Here we're gonna create a rule uh, allowing SSH to the Linux 2. So in order to create a rule, here's a tip. If you click on one rule, the next rule is gonna be added right after the one that's clicked. So if you don't click on anywhere, it I have one deny rule in the end. So any new rules that I that I add, they're not gonna work. My deny any any matches everything for you to if you don't know the palo alto checks the rules from the first from the beginning to the end all the way from the top to the bottom and my last one rule should be the deny any which matches everything and there is a deny on in the end so we're adding a new rule in the position two actually and the deny any should be pushed to the position three so i'll just click on icmp again the my first rule click on add and i'm gonna add allow ssh something like this the description you can say uh, allow ssh from linux 1 to linux 2 something like this you can put a tag if you want i'll just leave without now um, my source i'm gonna choose source so source zone i'm gonna choose trust my source address is gonna be my linux 1 I have already added this object here, so that's why. The destination, I can choose the untrust, or I should choose the untrust, and my destination address should be the Linux 2. Destination device you don't need to choose. Application, I'm gonna choose SSH. That's the application I want you to, to, to allow. These applications, they, they, they are already configured on the Palo Alto. So the Palo Alto recognizes the track, the traffic and recognizes through the port and through other features that the traffic is an SSH uh, legitimate traffic. Under service, if I need a different port, for example, port 5000, I already have a here TCP 5000. So I can use this service to allow port 5000 for the for the connection. But in my case, I'm gonna delete this and I want the application default. The application default for SSH is, is to use port 22. So only port 22 is gonna be allowed here. It's a cool feature from the Palo Alto that you don't need to define the ports. You define only the application and the Palo Alto already recognized the application, the, the ports, especially for special protocols like RTP that uses dynamic ports. So the Palo Alto takes care of all this all this stuff is not bad uh, there were a category I don't need now under actions I have the options of deny allow drop and reset in my case of course I'm gonna allow the traffic the profile types you only need this if you want to do something with an antivirus or malware detection or something like this this is a topic for a new video I'm just gonna leave none Log at session start and end. This is important. At session, usually I log at session end because I get more information from the from the from the session. For example, how many bytes has been have been transmitted. You can also log in the session start. I do this when I'm troubleshooting something sometimes that I want to see in the beginning. Okay, there is some traffic there, but you can use if you want. But as I said, the session end gives more information. You can also use both of them. You can click on session start and session end to use both of them. 
but you get two uh, sessions. I mean, the, for one session you get two entries when you when you look at the monitor. I'm gonna just leave the session end so we can see. So only gets logged to the firewall when the session comes to an end, which is usually what you want. Log forwarding, you can use this if you have Panorama or something else, like syslog server. In my case, I'll just leave it none. I'm not gonna schedule this rule and I'm not gonna do any Q, uh, quality of service uh, marking. So I'm just gonna press OK. So now the rule took the position uh, of two. So the deny any was pushed down. The allow SSH is here. So I need to commit and I'll be right back. So my change has been committed, but before we try to start making the test, I'm, I want to show you something. Here, after you have the security rule, doesn't have to be, can either be before the commit or after, doesn't matter. You can come with the mouse slowly on the object, and then you see this little arrow here. You can click on the arrow and then go to value, and you can see the value that's on the object. It's 10.0.2.5. If we come here, I'm going to show you. 10.0.2.5, so it's the Linux one, so it's correct. And also for the Linux 2, it should be 10.0.1.5. Yeah, that's correct also. So the rule is there. We can make the test now. Let me see. If I come here to the Linux one, remember it's the left one. And I go to SSH. I get now the permission denied. Public key. It means that the the server the linux 2 they managed to communicate with each other and the linux 2 said okay i need a public key and on my linux one i don't have any public key or private key set so that's the answer but they managed to communicate with each other so let's go to the firewall now to see under monitor what the file is gonna show there you go here now you can see that 12 12 there was now uh, that the port 22 was allowed from 10.0.1.5 to, sorry, 10.0.2.5 is the source, 10.0.1.5 is the destination, it was port 22. If we try to do something else, just being creative here, uh, how was it? I think it's P. I think now it should be trying to connect with the port 5000. Let me go back to the firewall now. If I click on monitor, there you go. Okay, it did, it did uh, work. So now he's trying to, with the port 5000, using SSH, even though SSH was allowed, but not the port 5000, only they allowed the application ports, which is port 22. So guys, that's it. If you liked the video, you got some value from it, just give me a thumbs up or a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. It's gonna help more people to get, um, to, get to see a video like this. And thank you for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye.